G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to be having a look at the MiG-23. Now, I did talk about the MiG-23 when it originally came out, and my reviews on it were rather harsh, but uh, in most cases, quite deserving. This plane is tough to fly, but it does come with a couple of very, very interesting little quirks, let's say. These quirks are the R23Ts. The R23Ts are perhaps the single reason why I play this plane. It is just that much fun to play with that I just sort of take the good with the bad. And the bad of this plane being that it is a bit of a bus and that it is a bit sad when it comes to F5s. It doesn't really come up against the F5 very well. Um, I was going through some old comments in one of my dev server videos uh, and somebody suggested that the F5 was going to be the one doing the clubbing and I said nah I think it's going to be the F4 and uh, like usual I was wrong the F5 is definitely the one that is handing it to the MiG-23 but the MiG-23 still has some very very viable tools. It is not the primary dogfighter of the Russian tech tree. In fact, you kind of really shouldn't be dogfighting in this thing at all, save against F-4s. You really should be using this as a support aircraft, and this is quite literally 11.0's support aircraft for the Russians. This is the kind of thing that you have to do in the MiG-23 in order to survive, get by, perform well, and uh, have a good time in this plane. It's not a plane that you can just sort of do whatever the hell you want and expect to come out on top. You actually have to play fairly conservatively, you have to play fairly measured, and that's kind of, it's sort of what I like to do in circumstances, but at the same time, I sometimes like to also get into the thick of it. So uh, whilst it doesn't quite fit my playstyle, there are a couple of little things in the MiG-23M that really bring me towards it. This plane can be a lot of fun, especially when it comes to uh, a good team, when you have a sort of support network around you that uh, doesn't crumble. Around patch day, we had a fair amount of F5s giving the matchmaker a go. It's a new plane, everyone wants to try it out, and because of that saturation of F5s, I found the MiG-23 uh, MiG really, really hard to fly. Combine that with the extremely good performance of flares against things like the R60, uh, I found this plane really, really tough to play, especially considering that its main sort of bonus, the, the thing that you draw yourself towards, is the uh, R23T, and the R23T has some really, really high affinity for flares. So I was very, very hesitant to actually recommend this plane, but as the F5s have sort of died down, you can tentatively give this plane a bit of a try. Have a look at this R23 here. It does kind of behave a little a bit like a an R530, one of the French 15G or, or 18G missiles. I can't quite remember how many Gs it pulls, but it's a big chonker on the Mirage, and I managed to get myself an EJ that is not paying attention. These are the kinds of enemies that you are wanting to be sort of engaging with. These are the enemies that you need to sort of prioritize because at the end of the day, if someone is paying attention, they can quite easily flare all of your missiles. You need to be basically aware that all of your missiles are very, very susceptible to flares and that you should be going for targets that are not going to flare for you. Uh, either planes that don't have flares or planes that might uh, be not paying attention and they're the ones that are sort of going to be your main food. Now speaking of food, this is an F8U2. Uh, I did play a couple of games in the F8U2. I got a down tier and I got an ace without really batting an eye. I just sort of moved the mouse and whoop de doo five kills. So maybe I'll have to sort of show you that in a in another video or have a few more plays of it and see what I think. But we've got ourselves two kills here and it's about to be a third. This uh, F4 that is in front of me isn't paying attention. That's kill number four and these kills will all start to roll in very very quickly. F4E behind me is focusing on my teammate there and unfortunately the teammate is the one that cops the beating and uh, now I'm in a bit of a sort of weird situation where I'm in a bit of a 2v1 so I'm going to try and help out my teammate there. The F4E unfortunately I think he gets shot down but um, I still managed to take the revenge shot which is always you know it's not the best, but it could be worse. Let's just put it that way. And of course, with good amounts of friendlies around, you can very, very easily dominate a battlefield because if you are the one that's going around being fast and picking off the ones that are most sort of, sort of preoccupied with your teammates, then you really do have an opportunity to make your plane shine. And that's what the MiG-23 does best. It has six missiles, or can carry up to six missiles, uh, f uh, which you can carry up to six R60s if you wanted to. Uh, but I like to carry the R23T because memes. But um, 
it's it's a good missile overall. Uh, now have a look at that. I was able to by pressing the missile button again, like the missile lock or prep button. It doesn't kill the missile anymore for some reason. What it does is it resets the tracker or the, the seeker head, which allows you to more selectively identify targets, especially when you have such a wide bore, uh, as in like the little, the outer circle of the missile. Since that is so broad, it is very easy for this uh, missile to stick to things like the sun. And so by taking that away or by uh, having the ability to reset that, then you basically have an opportunity to get some get some better kills or prioritize your targets or miss that friendly which happens all too often in recording the original mig 23 video i killed about three or four friendlies maybe more um and completely on accident of course it's it was really frustrating and it still is quite frustrating when you get a missile team kill because they always seem to just sort of jet for your friendlies those missiles They're, i don't know what it is but maybe it's just me Anyway, moving on to the next match here. This is a pretty interesting match, if I do say so myself. We're in a bit of a down tier, and with down tiers come a little bit of clubberino. So as a top tier plane, you are expected to carry the load. And being the plane that is more of a support aircraft, it is harder to carry the load. If you were in a MiG-21 BIS, for example, it would be a little bit easier considering that you have that amount of acceleration that you can sort of dish out, as well as having R3Ss, which are radar guided. So. First target here we're going to go for is completely distracted. This F5 doesn't even, probably doesn't even realize I'm there. Uh, the F4C here is another sort of case like that. And I'm going to try and get a nice lead on that uh, with the R23 and then realize that I'm probably not going to make the closure rate. So I go for a little bit of a spray with the uh, 23 and I realize that I have an F5C on my ass. Now, it doesn't matter how much I'm going to try and jet away. At 550 meters, there's basically fuck all that I can do unless I force an overshoot. Now, the only way I can force an overshoot is rely on this guy being bad and uh, overshooting. Now, what I've done here is I've purposely tried to keep my wings at uh, sort of sweep in order to force an overshoot by basically just throwing myself around to the point where I bleed so much speed that he just overtakes me. And that's pretty much what's happened here. The F5C has realized he's overcooked it. Uh, maybe he's blacked out because he doesn't have a great pilot and I am able to get myself a missile straight onto him. He just realizes at the last second and flares a little bit too late. So there's kill number two and I don't even have time to rest on my laurels because there's a Harrier coming in and he might be a GR1. I realize that he's not going for me and so that's my time to strike. I'm going to go and send him a missile but unfortunately this missile isn't really going to go anywhere. I just don't have the speed and therefore the missile doesn't have the speed so it's just not going to make the target with the Harrier going at maybe 1100 kilometers an hour. Not only that he uh, told told me to chill he, he used the, he used the meme the, the the daddy chill meme if you don't know what that is you're probably too young to use the internet but um, it's it's fucking hilarious just take some time go watch it and uh, have a laugh. So speaking of a laugh we're going to use the R23T and unfortunately this guy was paying attention so no funny for me. It's, uh, it's a real sad day when the R23T doesn't make its mark but it is so satisfying when it doesn't head on. Uh, but you've always got your R60s to try and clean up the mess afterwards. So we are basically three kills in and we have most of our R60s been used up and the R23Ts have also been used up. So we're down to one missile and a bit of uh, a bit of 23. But the 23 is really only usable in a situation where your opponents are super slow. So, And when I say super slow, I'm referring to like maybe 600, 800 kilometers per hour. I wouldn't be using it at supersonic. I certainly wouldn't be using it in anything else, but maybe head-ons and low-speed dogfights because at those super high speeds, it is just so easy to prepare for these sort of shots and line up a, uh, an evasion or evade that sort of deflection or evade your fire in any other way. So if you're going to be using this cannon, you have to be using it sparingly. You can't just use it as if it were the Vulcan, where you can kind of spray a little bit uh, or go for head-ons, be a bit fr uh, frivolous. You can't really afford to do that in the MiG-23. You have to be very conservative. So now that we've done that, we're going to go for a little bit of a landing and check out this beautiful thing. Honestly, it's just these little moments like this that you, uh, you realize just how good this game can be. Um, 
I don't know what it is, it's just very satisfying, and I thought I might just show off the little landing here. Uh, notice how one parachute comes out, but the plane actually has two. Uh, you'll see that the second one spawns in when the parachute cuts off. <laughs> but uh, it's no big deal, it's just something kind of cool and kind of neat to look at. I thought, gee man, this thing is, is one beautiful plane. It's, it's ugly, but it's beautiful. It's terrible, but it's great. And it is, I don't know, it's just one big bipolar mess, so... <laughs> Anyway, moving on, we are going to be looking for these last three targets. Now, there is an F4C, a Jaguar, and a F4E. The F4E is probably going to be the most deadly, and I know he's got uh, a little bit... I think he's got a kill under his belt and some base bombing and stuff like that. Uh, the F4C I'm not particularly worried about, but it's only a, a matter of sort of looking for these particular targets. I can't really pick the dot out of all the AI. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like AI in battles, especially at low altitudes. Uh, I'd just rather they not be in the game, but look, it's the way it is, and we might as well take it as it is and sort of make the most of it. So, uh, Jaguar there, I've spotted him, R23T, and uh, it's pretty much a done deal. There's not really much to say about that. The Jaguar wasn't paying attention, and uh, nor is this F4C, so we're going to go for ourselves... Uh, we're going to go for the ace, and the ace here could potentially be beautiful. He goes for the full commit head-on, and remember guys, full commit head-ons are small PP energy, so that's what you get for having small PP energy, and R23T, big donger, straight to your face. So don't, don't full commit to head-ons, it's bad for your health. Really, don't. So, our last target is the F4. E and uh, I think I've just spotted him on the radar. Now I have also mentioned in the past that this thing has IRST, infrared search and track, which means that it can spot little uh, heat signatures. Uh, I'm not sure what the resolution is or what the distance is, so I don't really know the efficiency or the effectiveness, but really what I'm trying to do here is use the radar to scare this guy to come to ground level, because I know at ground level I am going to have a better chance here, and if he has aim 7s, then he's probably going to be a little bit more deadly, but I'm also trying to line up my shot here so that it isn't uh, it isn't going to be on a, on a really heavy intercept path, so it has plenty of room to land, uh, but I've also managed to sneak up behind him to a point where I can almost use guns. I'm just a little bit too fast for guns, and you can see here I'm not really landing anything. I'm I'm just going to go for the shot. He's probably got bombs on, and uh, yeah, easiest six kills of my life. The MiG 23M is a lot of fun, but it has to be used in the right circumstances, and you have to have a good team to support you. This plane is not easy to fly, but it is certainly absolutely rewarding if you have the sort of skill and if you have the team to back you up. That's the most important thing. These planes are not the walk in the park like the F5E or even the MiG-21 BIS compared to this is a bit of a walk in the park. You need a plane that can sort of support you and things like other Phantoms, uh, things like the MiG-21, these are all really good candidates to support this type of plane. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want to give this plane a try, I would certainly recommend it. Just be careful and don't get your hopes up too high that it's going to be sort of carrying matches as such. You will be the train in the uh, in the match, but you certainly won't be that thing that's, that pulls it through to a victory, snatching it from the jaws of defeat. So ladies and gents, that is it for the video today. I thought I might take another look at the MiG-23M just to see how it goes in that new matchmaker uh, with the battle rating changes and of course with the matchmaker sort of stabilizing and the uh, F5 sort of doing a heck and disappear. If you would like to support the channel, you can always pick up some merch. I don't have this one on at the moment. I think I've taken this one down, uh, but I do have some other designs that you might find interesting. And uh, we do have a, a design that uh, might be coming very soon. Gaijin pending, of course. We have a couple of things in the pipeline, so stay tuned for that. That is very, very exciting indeed. But um, thank you for everyone who supports the channel. I sincerely appreciate everyone who likes, comments, views to the end, gives me the watch The watch time. Watch time is really important. The algorithm loves watch time and uh, interactions, so likes and comments. Uh, if you guys want to see some more, there'll be plenty of videos in the uh, channel itself, and maybe at the end of this video, we'll see how lazy I am. But uh, for those of you who support me monetarily, I'd like to thank you immensely, because that really means the world to me. Any monetary support goes to camera setups like this, or the computer, or, or merch. It 
just go straight back into everything, um, including sponsorships. So thank you for being so good about sponsorships. I, I really appreciate that. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.